that and Polly.com. This is Dodger. He's a seven-year-old cat. He's indoor-outdoor. He came to me about a week ago, and he had a swelling on the side of his face. So we're always looking at symmetry. So here's the right side of his face, which has a bony orbit, and then a divot where his cheek is, and then his mouth. And then on the left side of his face, he's got this really big kind of swollen area. Um, so he has a wound here. So we shaved it up last time and I could see that there was a little wound. We started him on oral antibiotics and I said, I want you to keep a really close eye on this. I've had lots of cats who get facial wounds that turn into abscesses. And for whatever reason, they don't just resolve quickly. For whatever reason, they just continue to grow and get bigger and abscess. And if they don't respond within about a week or so of, with the antibiotics, then we have to talk about putting a drain in. And some of these cats are just really difficult nightmares to handle. And I don't know why it's so prevalent at the face, but that's what happened. So, so she brought him back in. She said, he's really just lying around at home. He's not really eating very much. So because it's been a couple of days on antibiotics and he's not doing better, um, meaning he is not acting like his normal, bright, happy self, the first clue in cats is always how they're behaving. So how are they eating? How are they behaving? If they're not eating very much and they're laying around all the time, you should assume that there's a fever or infection and that's what's going on. So he's, he's got a fever. His face has gotten more swollen over the last week and he still has these wounds. Um, whenever I see an abscess, so for people love to poke things. Like I don't, I don't really know why, but this idea of lancing it, like everybody wants to lance. You have to remember that every time you lance something, whatever is on the outside of the skin, you're now pushing under the skin and into the body. So the abscess is walled off now, meaning he's got infection underneath the skin. It's doing, it's very happy there because it's got food source. So it's got blood and tissue and a food source. And then it's got warmth, um, but it's now so big that we're gonna have to do something. He has not responded to antibiotics. I certainly could put him on a better antibiotic or a stronger antibiotic. Um, but at this point, I'm going to try to lance it just to make sure there's infection in there. And then he's gonna have to come back when I can do surgery to put a drain in from here to here so that we can try to flush this area and get it to start to close up before it gets even bigger or starts to migrate up the side of his head. Um, this tissue can only stretch so much and then it starts to die. It starts to, to weaken and then die. And then eventually this abscess will open up. But what, unfortunately what happens is the abscess opens up like in a huge area and they lose like half of their face. So there's always this question about how much do you intervene? How fast do you intervene? You should intervene immediately. You need to watch them really closely. If he's not responding in a couple days or the face is getting bigger, you have to go to plan B, which is either try to drain it and then change your antibiotic. And then you have to be prepared to put a drain in and do surgery. Some of these guys with these facial wounds, I have managed for literally weeks to almost a month. Um, and all of that tissue dies and then you have to let it granulate in. So it could take a very, very long time. For him right now, he has to be inside. He has to be getting his antibiotics. Warm compresses will help, but we are gonna poke today. So for all of you who live for Lansing, today is your day. Mm. But just remember, there's always a cost to everything that you do. And you might get a short-term benefit in that that face feels better and you get to drain some of that infection, but there's going to be a long-term consequence, which is you can further complicate. Um, right now, this is you know a, probably a sterile environment. You, could, you can further complicate. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a sterile rub. Caitlin's gonna help hold for me, and I'm gonna try to get it in a place where I think it's already about to rupture. Okay, rub, 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 everybody. And see if we can get it to drain at all. So there we go. There's his abscess. Oh. It's this really milky kind of red material because that is pus and a little bit of blood. I'm gonna try to drain it. Um, you know, I, the, the problem is at this point, it's so big that if I don't start draining it and I just don't start managing it, it's going to slough off half of his face and then there will be a problem. Okay, so if you have a cat with an abscess, you go to the vet right away, you start on antibiotics right away, you refrain from poking because every time you poke, there's a cost for that. And then if you feel like you're dealing with it for longer than a week, you really need to do a place a surgical drain. If you have any questions about this or anything else, you can find me here at Jared's Full Vet or anytime at podly.com. Take care, take good care of your kitties. Um, make sure that you, if you do have a cat who's getting repeated abscesses, that they are current on rabies and you try to figure out who they're fighting. Take care, everybody. Bye.